second piece is made for that. Yes. And you're going to the lights. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. There's just, uh, for the members of the public, there's just some confusion over the name tags that have been put out. There's, there's been a couple of name tags put out which are in effect wrong, so the council office is just rectifying that. So that's the, that's the whole of it. should only take a second. I can't hear you. Could you mind the phone, Tom, please? The old one. That's the microphone. Oh, Matt, can you hear me now? No. Yeah, Oh, well, come down to the front then, Chris. It's not me. You sit next to Mr. and Mrs. Grace. We can't hear it in the back. Of if you can't hear it, come down to the front and sit next to Mr. and Mrs. Grace. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now?
ask whether anybody's got any pecuniary or other interests that they wish to declare. Can we not do McManus's apologies, please? And there's no no interest or pecuniary. Stephen. Um, yes, yeah, we would just declare the um, the Conservative group were all part of the call of signature. Yeah, yeah, that's that's duly noted, Steve. Thank you. Right, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, committee members, and ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Um, just before I begin my remarks, the um, issue of the petition that Mark says that the thousand people presented to council or over a thousand, that was in addition to the uh, 20,000 people that have already signed the petition um, against various country car parking charges. Um, I'm really disappointed that we're actually here again, uh, Chair, to talk about um, introducing self defeating charges. Following on from me, you'll hear from a range of people, from small business owners to volunteers and uh, sports enthusiasts, who will explain in detail the impact these charges will have on their organisations, their lives, and their well-being as well. Um, when this originally started, an original TRO was uh, published. Um, normally, all comments and objections would go to the highway to panel. Uh, now, under the strong leader model, the decision was taken by the leader. And then, subsequently, this decision was taken by the cabinet member, you know, bypassing the usual mechanisms of other representations going to the traffic uh, highways panel. I'd just like to ask committee members to remember that the activities that you're going to hear about in parks um, and what impact this will have to the council when we impose park parking charges if this decision is uh, taken later on. Uh, back in December, when the council leader presented his medium financial term strategy cabinet, um, there was a narrative in the budget of 1.5 million to raise in car parking charges, and that's just about enough you know, money to cover out what's been forked out on you know, contractors, consultants, and interns there. Uh, as I said earlier, more than 20 people, 20,000 people have signed a petition opposing these car parking schemes, and um, back in, I think it was January, the um, Council leader performed a partial new turn on his proposals, scrapping some on street parking and reducing the charges in some country parks. And I'd just like to remind the committee that also talking about here, um, it will only generate £150,000 from the parks and £220,000 from existing paid sites. To install the machines will cost £80,000 um, and they'll cost £22,000 a year to operate. The net income that will be generated on this will be 48,000, just 12,000 pounds per car park. So we're causing all this upset, worry and anguish, just think about 12,000 pounds. I'd like to just turn to one example, Chair, from May of uh, the friends of Gordon Martin and explain what they've been doing. You know, they've been tackling social isolation there, providing a meeting place for vulnerable adults and encouraging the families to use the parks as a healthy and rather inexpensive day out. Those friends groups there have raised £25,000 to improve the facilities in their park. And the administration wants to jeopardise this just to raise £12,000. I think it's simply outrageous. Show. As well as this, the, the, um, the Barking Man Cafe in Gordon Park, one of the parks that have got cafes associated with them, there's an important factor here as well. Um, three people have employed at the Redlands Cafe in our park, nine people have been the most of in Eastern Country Park, 10 people at JG's in rural Country Park, that's a total, total of 21 people who are directly impacted and um, those who are indirectly affected by it. Um, and I'd like to just ask the committee, when you think of the value of those 21 jobs that potentially may be at risk, is this worth the £48,000 in total revenue raised? Um, that's why I think this decision needs to be fully referred back to the leader. Um, and council officers are also predicting a 30% decrease in the number of visitors to these country parks. So how we can pledge one of the um, 2020 pledges is that small businesses can thrive. Just this is that um, in line with the with the rule number of 2020 pledges. I'd just like to briefly outline share the uh, GNLJ report um, about being mindful of mental health and the role that local government can play in mental health and any means of it quite interesting it explores how councils can influence mental health and well-being in communities and it specifically mentions um, to parks and open, open spaces and um, how this impacts well, on, the mental, on the mental year and what community support can be provided within these areas and just state that a mental health mental mental
be healthy waste. Um, it's one of the top things that council should be looking for. Um, the leader of council last time claimed to have listened to business owners when making his previous decisions. But um, since the last call, and I don't think any of the people behind me have been consulted or spoken to um, by the cabinet member or by the, by the leader, which is simply disgusting when someone pledges that they'll leave businesses to talk about the impact on it, we then don't bother to do it until we're here again today. And that's another reason uh, for this call and chair. Um, the fact that we are scrutinising this decision as a council launch as its business economy strategy is really perverse how popular this policy is. Um, it is common knowledge that imposing car parking charges on the most popular tourist destinations. Okay. Um, I'm trying to give you as much time as possible. All right, Chair, I'd just like to ask the committee the, to just consider the knock on effect this will happen in country parks. And I'd like to just, you know, uh, send this back to Cabinet just to think, them to think again, to speak to those business owners as they promised to do originally. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Sorry, Chair. If there's any questions, unless you don't want to answer any questions. I'll ask any questions as long as you like, Chair. Any questions from the members? I'm Christina. 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 i am i am i am the parks use due to these charges. That, that's come from the officers to you, has it? I believe that came out of the last call, in chair. And what department would have, does anybody know what department would have provided those for that information? I think it was uh, Mark Smith's department, I'm sure you Yeah, it was. It was yes. Uh, so yes, it was. Technical service. Provided that information. Hey, just for clarity, Tom, and for the members of the public. Yes, technical services said that they estimated, in, and it was only an estimation that might happen, that there would be a, a decrease of approximately 30% once we introduced the charges. Can, can I ask, is that, what, what evidence is that based on? I think Chair, I just took the, uh, the word of the council officers on what they said would be a yeah, 30%, that, so that might be a question that, for uh, well, one of the council officers. It will be a question for the council officers. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Any, any further questions? Just a brief one, Chair. Uh, Tom, I picked up very much on the fact that you, you talked about, because I wasn't at the last call, um, that there was a, a commitment given to speak to all of the people who've been witnesses and others at the, the last call. -in. And you're saying nobody's been contacted at all in that time? That, that is my understanding, Chair, Chair and if you remember at full council, I think somebody asked a question to the cabinet member for highways um, or businesses, he has a business since he pledged to, and he couldn't give an answer then, he said he would write to the yeah, end question. Thank you, Tom. <coughs>
just this financial year, but for the next 12 months, we'll be close to reduce our spending by 45 million pounds. 45 million pounds of real money. It's not a program of thoughts which shall be demanded of us. This is part of a program of thoughts which shall be demanded of us, which will to more than 130 million pounds by 2020. 130 million pounds is a somewhat abstract thing. This is real money, which pays for real services, which are not really just, it's not going to be there anymore. To put into context, just like to explain to the committee exactly what 130 million pounds were paid for. They were going for 165 million measure centres. We could pay the salaries of 3,000 social workers. We could fill 2 million plus holes. We could cut the bins for the next 18 years. That is the challenge we are facing. To suggest, as the full of the we say, that we will somehow simply be able to absorb these cuts from our capital services and for our to ask anyone to pay the law as far as we get this. It's also, also completely out of set with national conservative government policy. This is not their vision. Is it not their vision that every council in the UK should stand on its own two feet and funds the services from increased council tax and increased charges? That was the entire rationale behind the removal of revenue support grants. It seems that the reality of that decision is not nearly as palatable as the rhetoric. Which member is. To sum up, Chair, I would want to reiterate that we would not, in the perfect world, conservate the system such as this. We are not in the perfect world. The Council has to fill the £45 million Tory government bus to the world. Rather than sniping from the sidelines, this is our responsibility as, as the ruling group to do the work, make the decisions, provide the services. It would be better if everyone, if every group on the Council took their responsibilities as seriously and made a genuine effort to stand up for the world and fight for a fair fund to settle this. Rather than calling council meetings, perhaps the Tory members would call, call, join our call on the Prime Minister and make a religion chaos to restore a fair funding for the rural residents. Unfortunately, that does not seem likely. Our proposals of 50p for two hours parking or two pounds for a full day recognise the importance of the cultural country parks of the rural and our visitors and were raised by the needed revenue to provide the services of rural residents enjoy. <coughs> we take the impact of these decisions seriously, and that is why we listen to our residents. We listen to the consultation, and we must have the use of the proposals. Finally, Chair, I would like to thank every resident and every local business who took, took the time to take part in that process. We do understand the pressure they are under, we do understand their concerns, and we have done everything we possibly can to bear them in mind as we continue to force, be forced into exceptionally difficult budget set decisions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, thanks for your brevity. Would you switch your microphone off, Stuart, please? Thank you. Um, any questions for the camera? Dave, and then David. Uh, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> First one is in relation to two one of the report that you actually sent to, to uh, Cabinet. Uh, the, the, the original the initial TRO proposals, which form the basis for the assumptions in the financial strategy report to Cabinet in December 16 and subsequent formal consultation were rejected and reduced to what we've got in front of us at the moment. Now, uh, I pose the question to a Cabinet member, when he went out to consultation, how much did the consultation cost, first of all? And secondly, was it a false premise that it went out because it was both highways uh, parking charges and the country parks, and everybody who knows, knows that high raise revenue goes back into repairing the high raise and it can't be used for anything else, but the country parks revenue can use whatever you like. So, would the cabinet member like to answer those two questions? The original consultation went out as part of the overall budget consultation. Now, supplementary to that, Chair, when it first came to this committee, the first call, I did ask the Cabinet member then uh, why he hadn't been out to talk to any of the representatives, especially Arrow Park and Eastern Country Park, who were majorly affected by the proposal to put forward. Has the Cabinet member been out to speak to those companies or businesses? No, no. Oh, no. As I said at the previous call, the doors are always open. We want people to come source them. I'm not always going to source them. I think, I think, I think, you know, no, given the ongoing uh, consultation process, um, I, 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 no, probably not appropriate to 
sort of other exceptions is that we remember the proposed revenue margin put for the public account yesterday, and the hundred thousand pound down due to the players and the issues of the market that can challenge. Right, so okay, then one other simple question, or sorry, two, sorry, one other supplementary. Your officers have suggested, and we may need to get this clarified later on, that as a result of this action being taken, it's likely that we'll get a 30% reduction in people using our parks. Now, I think that is a concern. Would you accept that that's the case? Were you involved in that decision, in that suggestion that that would happen? Firstly, uh, I would suggest officers are on uh, forecasting that the first percent reduction of people using parks. Just the first percent reduction no way for the traffic across uh, our, our parking space. Well, well, we'll obviously need to clarify that later. The final question, I think, is more relevant. Um, you have suggested that you have not been to see Arrow Park. Have you been to see people who directly have been in contact with me in regarding Royden Park or Thurston St. Visitor Centre? Have you been down there to talk to them? No, I, I think if you, if you raise specific concerns with them, people will be in contact with you. Have you spoken to the people who run those parks in terms of yeah. the impact? And I, and I, think, I, think, I think it's also a place to say. Sorry, I'm just asking questions. Just a yes or no. I just answered the question. So, so well, I, think, I think what we're not proposing is that she charges the parks. It's just you know, parking vehicles. So, so, no. The reason I'm asking the question is because there's a lot of unintended consequences that have been brought to my attention. When the perception was at budget stage that these parks were going to have charges imposed on them. Everybody stopped parking at Thurston Country Park and instead parked on the narrow station road going down towards the park, causing an obstruction. Also, they were parking in the grounds of the private caravan site at the end. What people are concerned about is the unintended consequences of you charging for parking at Royden and at Rural Country Park because it's already had an impact on people not being able to get to their own locations in those areas. Have you taken into account, and I don't think you have, the unintended consequences as a result of that and the angst and the problems that are going to be created by it? Because that is something that does need to be taken into account. And for the, for the benefit financially that we just discussed earlier of this particular activity, not the overall problems of austerity in the country, because we've looked down to the previous Labour administration, we're not going to be involved in We're talking specifically now about the problems of parking on the Wirral, and those two things need to take account of. So what the second question was, have you taken account fully of the unintended consequences of charging for these areas and the fact it's going to have on the surrounding roads and the surrounding properties where people live adjacent to these parking areas? Steve Atkins will be no step, no step up, no bit later on, no we can be able to answer any, any technical questions. And I think it's fair to say that you know, you know, when, when the charges are introduced, they'll be, they'll be monitored and, and the, the surrounding areas will be monitored. Well, let me give you a little information, Stuart, you may not already have. Your council and your highways department has spent well over £10,000 introducing, at my request, and I thank you greatly for them for doing it, the Yellow the Lines down the whole of Station Road in first system. Now that's £10,000 you wouldn't have had to spend just on that location alone for introducing double yellow lines in an area that it wouldn't have been necessary if you hadn't imposed the charges that were all. Just that I don't have information for you. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Stuart, I'm concerned about how much your interest in the views of the public. Now, just before you took the last decision, Cabinet, you had in your possession a 20,000 plus signature <coughs> petition. So, with the petition in your hands, you were then started discussing these issues. So, what, what notice did you take of these 20,000 people that were asking you not to do this? Did you? You're not interested in them? No. no. That's a good, that's a question, isn't it? <laughs>
I, I, I think I think I, that's been a question I've answered. No, I, I, no in, on June the 8th, the people who were over, overwhelmingly rejected austerity. Now, if, if the government listens and rejects austerity and starts in front of no, it starts from the middle fairly and squarely, then we can do stuff like this. If I may, that's, that's ridiculous. This is a collection. You've got, you, you've got in front of you, you, you've got in front of you more than 20,000 signatures of you of all over the residents. What, what notice did you take of them? Did, 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 did anybody read them all and tell you about them all? Did you ignore them or what? No, the original proposals were a lot more severe than the ones that no potentially agreed to the budget. No, I, I would suggest that no, this is not just people in the world, but across the country, where austerity is being rejected. No, no, if, if, if this council got proper funding, then no one's going to have to be used to that. It's not about the rest of the country, it's about our lives. Can I, can I ask the members of the public to try, I know it's an emotive issue, and I know it is, and I understand that, but can you please try not to call out please, so all the members can hear what's being said and what isn't being said, so I do ask you please try and refrain from shouting out. Um, Eddie. Thank you, Chair. It, it seems to be spending power and cut at the moment. I asked 12 months ago uh, on a budget report from you, this would be for United uh, sorry, utility companies digging up holes and fines. You quoted £170,000 was in fines. That could not be put in the budget because you wouldn't know what the fines were. I was then told it was overspending. Now that's £170,000. I've got Mark Smith here who might be able to help me out on this. What was the book? What was the overspend on 16 budgets, 1670 for the holes that were done? Because we are now looking at a situation where there was 170,000. You voted in councils 12 months ago. That would certainly cover the car parking charges that you're wishing to put in. Could you please tell me what the budget for overspending in 1670 and how much you took in fines? Can you elaborate, Eddie? We'll, we'll have to come back to you on that one, Jerry. Thank you. Could I have that in writing to all councillors, please? Yes, certainly. Chair, Chair. 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 Stuart? Yeah. I mean, even if you took your know, well, fines reflected from the utility companies, and added a, add a bit to the, you know, to any car park in, in income. Well, where's the list of plus and how many come from? I'm not worried about what your quote is. I'm quoting that it was £170,000 that was proven that you could not put in the budget because you wouldn't have known what the figure was. And I'm asking where that went. That, that will certainly cover part of the charges you're putting in. Right, we... We've made a note of that, Andrew, we've made a note of that question, and it will be answered in writing again. Thank you. Dave, you indicated you want to come back in. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. It's in relation to a comment that was made by governments and, and the like. The outcome is finances and setting the budgets and what's going. The last select committee that we had, what let's go to? Here we had a report from the finance department in relation to our particular subcommittee from that there was a, a return to uh, reserves of uh, 2.3 million on this one. Now, given that, 2.3 million on this one, uh, and the amount of budget that we have, the benefits of a small amount of that being set back to reserves, actually taking away the proposed charges, would benefit a lot more people than the one point uh, is it? that were given to uh, the youth hub, which will actually, in my view, give uh, a lot less to the general public. Now, the 
100,000 which is mentioned, and it's in the report to Cabinet next week, of course, which you, you understand, saying it's a shortfall because you haven't already implemented these charges. I, mean, I firmly think that's uh, a negative side for them, not realising that these would have been called in and looked at in depth by the Select Committee, given the small amount of revenue that they're going to raise in the initial years. I'll be happy to wait for Steve to come after to ask questions in relation to costs of the implementation of the uh, parking meters, the revenue return, and how long it will be before we actually get a return. We know, and I've explained this to this committee before, that other authorities have tried this in the past and failed miserably, and it's cost them hundreds of thousands of pounds. Why are we following the same route? I really don't want to know why we are following the same route. I, I, I've, got to say, I've got to say to the cabinet member, I think there's argument before over finances and the governments. I understand the government's doing to us. It really is bad. It really is hard. But if select committees can retain underspends annually to the, to the budget, then surely that money should be spent for the benefit of the people of the community. I, think, I don't think there was a question in there, Stuart. There was. What was the question? The, one, the, question, sorry, the question was why, uh, for the small amount that they were going to raise, did they not stop it? Because they could have taken the revenue out of the underspend. Absolutely. I'm sure you're aware that you can going to spend revenue yeah, reserves. <coughs> are, there, are, there any, are there any further questions from the cabinet? Just before you go, Stuart, nobody, nobody's mentioned it uh, so far. But I think all members around the table, because of, because of these severe cuts, have noticed all our grass verges and our open spaces. The grass is growing longer before we manage to get it cut. So in our country parks, it seems to me the parks and gardens, because of the cuts, their job is year on year, and it seems worse this year than it was last year and, and the year before, and I'm sure next year we'll be seeing it in all our wards, but particularly in our country parks, which are the jewel, and they are the jewel in our crown and world, as well as the coastline, the magnificent coastline we've got. Our parks and countryside are the jewel in our crown. So isn't it fair to say that the revenue, and Dave mentioned the revenue before, if we, if we have on-road parking charges, those, ch quite rightly, are going to go back into maintaining the roads. But in the country parks, the revenue can be used, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be asking Julie Webster later on that some of that money might well go into public health and to maintain our 2020 pledges, which have been mentioned today. But I'd like to comment that particularly because of the cuts, maintaining the jewel in our crown year on year is getting harder and harder and harder. And one of the reasons we've, we've the cabinet and yourself have proposed these car parking charges is so we is for so that we can maintain the jewel in our crown, which is our country parks. Because if we don't maintain them, and I think this is a fair comment for all the members around this table, if we don't maintain our parks and our countryside, less and less people will want to go to them, never mind car parking charges, putting them off. The state of the, of the, of the parks will put them off. And through a sheer natural progression, if we don't do this to maintain the parks, people will, of their own volition, stop coming and using our magnificent parks. Thanks, Jay. It's a pretty well said. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. Our country parks are absolutely fantastic. I'm very, very proud of our country parks. I'm happy to have you know, our country, happy to have our country parks. I've worked for most of my life. Um, no. It's, it's, it's a fact, you know, you know rangers and the, the other staff, you know, involved in maintenance of the park all, all, all need to be paid for. And, you know, you know give, give them the, the, the space, the, the, 
finances to the council. This is a way of raising revenue that we can reinvest back into the parks for the benefits of everyone. You know, it's, not, it's not by accident that we've got more you know, green flags than anyone else in, in the North West. But I think, I think it happens in the to be proud of. And it's a sadly, we're going to have to raise this. Money. So we can reinvest in, you know, invest in, in our parks and you know, make sure that we maintain the same in the high standards and for the benefits of everyone. That's a ni nice note to end on, uh, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you for that. Right, I'm now going to, to call the, the witnesses that, um, that, that Tom has put, uh, put down here. I'll, I'll just read them out and it, I'll be calling them in this order. First will be Julie Webster, who's the Deputy Director of Public Health. Then Councillor Phil Gilchrist, who's the Ward Councillor for Easton. Then Andy Woods from Arab Park. Jane Smith from Arab Park. Richard Fay from Eastham Country Park, Pat Gibson, Gibson Saxty from Eastham Country Park, and Karen James Hunt from Eastham Country Park. So I'll be calling the witnesses in that order. Um, and the first, the first witness to come forward is Julie Webster, please. And can I remind you, Julie, about the, about the five minutes, if you can, please. In fact, Julie, I believe you're not going to make a statement but you'd just like to answer any questions that any members around the table would like. So if I can, if I can start by asking for a show of hands if anyone would like to ask you any questions. And can we try, members, and this is all members, can we try and keep the, the statements and the political points maybe till the, the end when we're discussing <coughs> what the outcome's going to be and try and keep it short. So if you've got any political points to make, save them till the end perhaps. Jerry, would you just ask you to explain to us what your role is in what you face? Yes. Oh, that's a, that's a good, good point, Jerry. Thank you. Julie, yes, and for the members of the public and for the, for the members sitting around the table, could you just explain what your what your job is, please. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Chair. Yes, I'm um, the. I'm currently the acting um, director of health and wellbeing. So I have been acting as Fiona Johnson, the director of public health's deputy, for the past um, four years. Four years in all in, in October. So for those of you who know Fiona, then I work closely with her, and it's about um, promoting the tech and health of the local population. Is that? Yes, I think that's quite succinct. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? Steve? Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Julie. Um, one of the real pledges is to fix the other part, which are the old people who live well. Can, can you explain how easy and how it helps that the, the access to our parks and open spaces uh, contributes to this pledge? Um, 